forecast for Monday, January 1st. So welcome to January, welcome to 2024. If you haven't listened to the January 2024 forecast as of yet, I'm going to recommend you do that. We have a very interesting start to the year. Why do I say that you may ask? Well, first of all, we're starting on a Monday. That's a very interesting dynamic. Uh, secondly, we have the moon in Virgo, the sun, of course, in Capricorn energy, earth on earth, which definitely suggests that not only are we thinking long term, Capricorn energy, but we are thinking about the smaller details that are needed to be put together in order to bridge the gap from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be Virgo energy. One thing I will say is that 2024 is giving off the vibes that we are not messing around. We're starting on a Monday. We're business oriented with that Capricorn energy and we're problem solver modes activated because of the Virgo energy. Not only that, we also have Mercury going direct at 22 degrees, 11 minutes, which is a divinely scripted number, definitely putting us in a beautiful situation on top of Jupiter, who of course rules over the Sag energy, now direct Venus in this Sag energy, Mars in this Sag energy. You best believe that we are gifted with the biggest, broadest perspective that we could possibly have, the most optimistic, confident type of view that we could possibly have the mood the attitude that we could possibly have we are being set up for success so what we do with this energy is definitely going to be up to us whether or not we're going to make it or break it really comes down to what it is that we're focused on here in the mental plane so again there's a january 2024 energy forecast, Mercury going direct. There's an astro forecast for that. Let's get our ducks in a row. Let's give ourselves the best start to a brand new year that we could possibly have. 2024 is not messing around and either should you. So with that being said, there are eight different aspects taking place here today. Six of them going to involve the moon. The moon in this Virgo energy going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer who is direct in Aries energy. Again, keep in mind that the moon in Virgo needs to focus on the problems, needs to focus on the issues in order to solve them. We have to feel it in order to heal it. Now, lucky for us, this is a positive interaction, which means that we're having an epiphany of who it is that we now are, the new identity that we're anchoring in, the new karmic chapters that we are bossing ourselves up, preparing ourselves to jump all the way in. This is definitely suggesting that we're in the mindset, we're in the emotional space to solve, resolve, heal, and repair. We're not messing around here. And we're definitely getting off to a very good start. The moon in Virgo energy going to trine, beautiful interaction with the sun, who of course is in Capricorn energy. This is some earth on earth action. We are making sure that we are very present in our physical bodies. We're very present in the moment. We're taking a good look around at the physical realm in which we've created. We are processing what needs to stay, what needs to go. The sun shining a bright light in Capricorn energy focused on the long term goals. The moon being in this Virgo energy, focusing in on the smaller details that's going to help us align with those long term goals. This is an aha moment. This is an epiphany. This is a realization. We are getting some puzzle pieces that will be snapping together, revealing for us the direction, the path that we need to be walking. Here's where things get a little bit negative, Nancy. We have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Sagittarius energy, getting into the boxing ring, fighting it out with Saturn. Saturn's the Lord of Karma. He's in Pisces energy. This is definitely going to turn the volume all the way up on the wah wah. We are definitely more focused on the negative situations, on the negative Nancy narratives on the negative possibilities. We're letting our anxiety get the best of us. We're letting our mental plane get the best of us. That egoic programming really pushing us into a state of fear. The first step that we are trying to kind of make in this new path, in this new direction, suddenly seems a lot scarier than it has been in a very long time. We're kind of getting a reality check. We're realizing where it is that we did have some goals that we are no longer in alignment with. We're feeling a little bit discombobulated, a little bit discontent, 
very isolated, very unloved. We are definitely getting off to a not so nice start in the emotional realm. We have our guards up. We're a little bit defensive, especially with our feelings. We're reserving our affection, so to speak, and fear, doubt, insecurity, definitely the root of all evil at this particular point. We have all of these aspects that are so positive, pushing for us to grow, to heal, to repair, to make some progress that, of course, we have to expect that there is that dark force agenda trying to creep in, preventing us from that positive outlook, from that positive narrative. This is that particular aspect. There are going to be a lot of difficulties coming up in our heart space. There's going to be a lot of negative narratives spiraling into the worst case scenarios. We want to nip this in the bud as quick as possible. Now that you have the heads up, you should be prepared to kind of navigate through this particular funky energy that, again, isn't going to last very long, but could definitely take us down to the pit of the darkness if we're not careful. What this is going to do is give us a little bit of a reality check where it is that we are giving permission, if you will, to our heart space, to our head space to be negative to really fall victim to all of these fears, doubts, and insecurities. We don't have to sit in it. We are going to have the realization of that. And many of us are going to dig ourselves out of this deep, dark pit with this reality check of how strong we actually are in our mental plane, in our heart space. So again, it's not going to last super long, but it is followed with the moon in Virgo interacting with Pluto. Pluto, again, the great transformer himself at the very ending degrees of Capricorn energy. This is intense and it is going to magnify that criticism, that judgment that we're casting upon ourselves, that negative narrative. Again, Virgo energy really focuses in on the egoic mental plane. Pluto energy focuses in on the deep, dark let's call it seeds in our psyche. So we do have to kind of, again, feel it in order to heal it. We have to experience the darkness in order to choose the light. So around, let's say, 1.30-ish p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to break free of this little dark chapter that we definitely are all going to be sitting in. The moon in Virgo going to make a positive interaction with the North Node in Aries, trying to get us on the right path to our next chapter, to our next potential, to our next mission and quest. What we are gaining from this is an opportunity to see a step forward, to see some growth, to see some progress, to see some healing, to see some repairment in our emotional realm. Again, once we sit in the funk, we have the ability to see a brand new truth, a brand new purpose, a brand new light. The moon in Virgo going to make a positive, but yet a little bit tension filled interaction with Chiron. So it's not as positive as it was to kick the day off. This is, again, illuminating for us where it is that we do still have wounds. Now, that may sound like a little bit of a negative situation. However, if you're walking around not aware of the wounds that you need to heal in order to actually be a vibratory match for the situations and circumstances that you're looking to manifest, then you're pretty much walking around blind. That's why I say it's a positive tension filled aspect, because out of the tension, out of the conflict, we're realizing our problems, our issues, our narrative, our emotional blockages. That is a win in my eyes, because again, you have to be aware of it in order to feel it, in order to heal it. So we're definitely making some progress, some growth in our emotional realm. 10.06 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we find Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, ruler of communication, going direct, 22 degrees, 11 minutes. Again, there's an astro forecast out there for your listening pleasure so that you understand what it is that we can expect from the energy fluctuations. And of course, if you have your Capricorn season e-guide available, flip to this particular astro event and really capture what's going on, where your mindset is at, where your attitude is at, where some of the conversations, topics and themes are at, because this is going to be playing out and making some direct connections to the end of November ish. Very important. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon trining beautiful interaction with Uranus. So Uranus is the great awakener. He likes to shock us. He likes to kind of open up our minds. He likes to disrupt 
our plans in order for us to see where better methods, better ways, better paths, better directions could actually be more favorable to us. Again, Uranus is retrograde in this Taurus energy. So this, again, is some Earth on Earth action. And what we're gaining from this is a perspective on where it is that certain routines, certain relationships, certain, let's just call them autopilot situations, where they need to change, where we've gotten into a rut, where they are a little bit too comfortable and not providing us with the opportunity for change or growth. So suddenly we have an aha moment, we have an epiphany, we understand where it is that some of the blockages and obstacles and challenges are in existence in our physical realm. And again, the moon in Virgo just needs to be aware of it in order to improve it, to fix it, to heal it, to repair it. And you best believe that we are present in the moment, present in our physical bodies, listening to how certain situations make our bodies feel, listening to the inner dialogue that thinking about some of the possibilities of making some of these changes actually make us think and make us feel opening us up again to the newness that absolutely needs to be established as we enter into this new year.